Sixteen-year-old Jerry Rogers' classmates gasped audibly and recoiled in shock as the young human demonstrated how to make fire by vigorously rubbing two sticks together, a basic survival skill considered rudimentary on Earth, but horrifying to the sheltered alien students in his xenobiology class at the Intergalactic High School. What kind of hellish death planet requires younglings to learn something so dangerous just to survive? muttered Xanth, Jerry's insectoid trill desk mate, his antennae quivering with distress. Jerry had been eagerly awaiting his turn to share unique facts about his homeworld. As the only human student, he knew his alien peers viewed him as an intriguing oddity, a novelty from the notorious death world Earth with its lethal menagerie of flora and fauna. The other students' home planets were tame, cushy paradises in comparison, their natives never having to evolve defenses against extreme climates or hungry predators. They looked upon humans like zoo animals, fascinating but dangerous creatures to be safely observed from afar. When the teacher called upon Jerry, the class leaned forward in morbid anticipation of what gory tales the resident Death Worlder would reveal. Jerry launched into animated stories of navigating everyday hazards like raging thunderstorms, unstable tectonic plates, and venomous insects, watching his classmates' eyes grow wider with each casual mention of these perilous commonplace events on Earth. He then described some of his own near-death experiences growing up, like the time he broke his arm falling out of a tree or almost drowned while surfing a massive wave or had to get stitches from a vicious dog bite. Jerry laughed, recalling these harrowing childhood mishaps, but his classmates looked increasingly queasy, scarcely able to conceive of growing up in an environment where grievous bodily harm lurked around every corner, as a matter of course. And don't even get me started on Australia, Jerry added with a chuckle, hoping to lighten the mood. Everything on that continent is actively trying to kill you, 24-7. The snakes, the spiders even the cute fuzzy mammals, especially the drop bears. This comment, intended as a joke, only heightened the tension as his alien peers shuddered at the idea of an entire death world region even deadlier than the rest. Xanth looked ready to pass out from horror, swaying alarmingly on his spindly legs, his fragile exoskeleton clearly not built for the rigors of Terran life. Even the teacher, a mild Denebian who claimed to have seen it all, wore an expression of appalled bewilderment at the everyday dangers humans endured on their turbulent planet. She had extensively studied Earth, but the theoretical knowledge paled in comparison to a human's first-hand accounts, especially those of a young one who considered deadly peril unremarkable. A palpable wave of relief passed through the classroom when the lunch chimes sounded, offering a welcome interruption. The students filed out without making eye contact with Jerry, giving him a noticeably wide berth as they hurried past Earth's ambassador of death and destruction. Only Xanth gave a jerky nod of acknowledgement before scuttling away on trembling legs, overwhelmed with new existential dread. Jerry was left standing alone, smarting from guilt and confusion at his classmates' intense reaction. He wondered if he'd revealed too much about the precarious brutality of human existence, things he took for granted as normal, but were clearly alien to his sheltered extraterrestrial peers. All teens, regardless of species, just wanted to fit in at school. But it's hard to relate to classmates when your daily life is basically a horror vid to them. Watching the other students flee in terror, Jerry worried he had further ostracized himself, ruining any chance of cross-species friendships. Perhaps he should have censored his experiences to be more palatable, focusing on humanity's redeeming qualities rather than its daily dances with death. But another part of Jerry, the fierce, indomitable human spirit, could not help but feel a flicker of pride at his species' extraordinary resilience, able to flourish against all odds on an unforgiving planet that would chew up these weaker alien races and spit out the bones. Sometimes conformity came at too steep a price. Stealing his spine with resolve, Jerry strode down the hall to the cafeteria, determined to show his classmates that humans offered far more than just sensational stories of survival. His people had not conquered Earth's litany of lethal adversity only to conquer the stars and cower before some extraterrestrial judgment. This teenage death worlder would make humanity's introduction to the intergalactic community a memorable one.
or die trying. Spend enough time staring down actual death and social awkwardness barely registers. Jerry was a human, and he would represent his audacious species loud and proud, with unwavering courage and just a touch of morbid humor. Jerry entered the bustling cafeteria, his stomach growling. He grabbed a tray of unidentifiable alien food and scanned the room for a place to sit. The chatter died down as he walked past tables, alien students averting their eyes or whispering behind raised appendages. Jerry sighed and plopped down at an empty table in the corner. As he poked at his gelatinous meal, Jerry noticed Xanth hovering nearby, antennae twitching nervously. The insectoid alien cleared his throat. Um, Jerry, may I join you? Jerry's face lit up. Sure thing, Xanth. Have a seat. Xanth carefully lowered himself onto the bench. I must admit, I'm still processing what you shared in class, but I'm curious to learn more about your world. Thanks, I'd like that, Jerry smiled. Actually, I'd love to hear about Trill. How does your hive mind work? Xanth's compound eyes gleamed. Well, we evolved on a placid world with minimal gravity. No major predators or disasters to contend with. So we developed complex neural networks and psionic abilities instead of physical defenses. Fascinating. Jerry leaned in. So you're all connected mentally? In a sense, yes. We share a collective consciousness, though we maintain individual identities. It allows for rapid technological advancement, but leaves us vulnerable to psychological harm. Jerry nodded. I can see why Earth seems so scary then. Our bodies and minds evolved to handle constant threats. Indeed, your resilience is impressive, if terrifying, Xanth admitted. As they chatted, Jerry noticed other students drifting closer, ears perked to eavesdrop. He raised his voice slightly. You know, humans aren't just about surviving danger. We're explorers and inventors, too. We dream of the stars. A tentacled alien piped up. But why explore when it's so risky? That's what drives us, Jerry explained. Curiosity, the thrill of discovery. We went from primitive tribes to walking on our moon in just a few thousand years. A chorus of impressed murmurs rippled through the growing crowd. Jerry fielded questions about Earth's history and culture, painting a fuller picture of humanity beyond just its deadly reputation. Sounds like you monkey men just have a death wish, a sneering voice cut in. A towering reptilian alien pushed through the group, scales overflowing. I'm Zorg and I say you savages don't belong here. Jerry raised his hands placatingly. Hey now, there's no need for... Zorg jabbed a clawed finger into Jerry's chest. Shut it, ape, I'll put you in your place. Back off, Zorg, Xanth stood, legs trembling but voice firm. Diversity makes our community stronger. Other students nodded in agreement. Zorg snarled, drawing back his fist. What's going on here? A teacher swooped in, gills flaring. Zorg, principal's office, now. As Zorg was led away, Jerry turned to Xanth and the others. Thanks for standing up for me. I really appreciate it. Xanth's antennae wiggled happily. What are friends for? Jerry grinned, but inwardly he knew the real work of changing minds about humanity was just beginning. He'd have to keep proving humans were more than just death worlders if he wanted to truly belong in this alien community. Jerry entered the advanced alien technology lab, his eyes darting around the sleek room filled with unfamiliar gadgets and holographic displays. He spotted Xanth waving his antennae in greeting and made his way over to their shared workstation. Ready to dive into this engineering project? Jerry asked, setting down his backpack. Xanth's compound eyes glimmered with excitement. Absolutely. I've been reviewing the specs all night. As they huddled over the workbench, Jerry casually mentioned some human inventions. You know, back on Earth, we had to get creative with our tech, like using coconuts for emergency radio transmitters or making water filters from sand and charcoal. A snort of derision came from the next station over. Jerry turned to see Cracks, a gangly alien with iridescent scales, sneering at them. Please! Crack scoffed, as if your primitive human contraptions could compare to the marvels of Zetherian engineering. 
Our nanofactories can produce devices beyond your comprehension. Jerry felt his cheeks flush with irritation. Without a word, he grabbed a handful of discarded components from the scrap bin. His fingers flew as he twisted wires, fused metal, and repurposed circuits. Within minutes, Jerry held up a compact device cobbled together from spare parts. Here, try this multi-tool. Crax's jaw dropped as Jerry demonstrated the tool's functions, scanning, welding, cutting, and more, all packed into one efficient package. But how? Crax sputtered. Jerry shrugged. Sometimes simpler is better. We humans learn to work with what we have. Word spread quickly through the lab. Students gathered to gawk at Jerry's creation, murmuring in a mix of awe and resentment. In their next class, the instructor's booming voice cut through the chatter. Today, we'll examine extreme planetary conditions. A vivid hologram flickered to life, revealing a desolate landscape. Cracked earth stretched to the horizon, punctuated by twisted metal ruins. The air shimmered with waves of heat and radiation. Horrified gasps filled the room. Xanth's antennae drooped in shock. What hellish place is this? The instructor grimly intoned, This student's is a region of post-apocalyptic Australia on Earth, one of the most inhospitable. Hey, I know that place, Jerry interrupted, leaning forward with a grin. That's the Rad Zones. My family used to vacation there. The class fell silent, all eyes turning to Jerry in disbelief. Vacation? Xanth squeaked. Jerry nodded eagerly. Oh, yeah. We'd go rad bashing through the ruins. Dad taught us how to build anti-rad suits from scrap. It was a blast. He chuckled at the memory. I even brought home a pet from one trip. Little canine lizard I named Chompers. Cute little guy, breathed fire and everything. The silence stretched broken only by the sound of a student retching in the back of the room. You... you lived there? Another classmate finally managed to ask. Well, just for a couple weeks each summer, Jerry clarified. It's not like we could stay too long without better gear, but it was a great spot for extreme camping. The instructor's tentacles trembled as he struggled to regain control of the class. That's... that's quite enough, Jerry. Let's move on to... But the damage was done. Students edged away from Jerry, eyeing him with a mixture of fear and awe. Even Xanth looked a bit green around his mandibles. Jerry sighed inwardly. He'd done it again. Freaked out his classmates without meaning to. He'd have to find a way to show them humans weren't just radiation-proof monsters. There had to be some common ground. Right? Jerry's casual revelation about vacationing in radioactive wastelands sent shockwaves through the school. Whispers followed him down the halls, a mix of fear and fascination. I heard he bathes in nuclear waste, one student hissed. No way, I bet he eats it for breakfast, another countered. Some gave Jerry a wide berth, scurrying away when he approached. Others trailed after him, peppering him with questions about Earth's deadliest locales. During their next P.E. class, Coach Zixnorp gathered the students. His tentacles writhed with anticipation. Today, we test endurance. Jerry, you're up first. The obstacle course loomed before them, a hellscape of hazards that would push most species to their limits. Jerry stretched, looking oddly relaxed. Begin, Coach Zixnor bellowed. Jerry took off, bounding over plasma pits with ease. He scaled the electrified climbing wall like it was a playground structure. The other students watched, jaws agape, as Jerry treated the grueling course like a light jog. Halfway through, Jerry's foot caught on a hidden snare. He stumbled, ankle twisting with an audible pop. The class gasped. Medical team, stand by, Coach Zixnorp started. I'm good, Jerry called out. He grabbed a piece of scrap metal, quickly fashioning a makeshift splint. Within seconds, he was back on his feet, continuing the course. Jerry crawled through tunnels lined with razor-sharp blades, emerging with only a few scratches. He dodged geysers of acid without breaking stride. The final gauntlet awaited, robotic arms swinging wildly, raining down blows that could shatter bones. 
The class winced, certain this would stop the unstoppable human. Jerry gritted his teeth and plunged in. Metal fists pummeled him from all sides. His lips split. Blood trickled from his nose. But he pushed through, deflecting strikes and weaving between mechanical appendages. Emerging on the other side, Jerry jogged to the finish line. His shirt was in tatters, bruises blooming across his skin. But he was grinning. Nice warm-up, Jerry panted. What's next? Coach Zick Snorp's eye stalks bulged. He wordlessly handed Jerry a medbay pass. Jerry waved it off. Nah, I'm fine. Just need an ice bath and I'll be good to go tomorrow. As if to prove his point, Jerry casually reached up and popped his dislocated shoulder back into place with a sickening crunch. Xanth scuttled over, antennae twitching nervously. Jerry, that was... Are you sure you're all right? Jerry clapped Xanth on the back, nearly toppling the fragile trill. Never better. Hey, want to hit the cafeteria? I'm starving. As Jerry strolled away, Coach Zixnorp huddled with other faculty members. They spoke in hushed, urgent tones, eyes darting to the human student. We need to study this further, one teacher insisted. The resilience, the adaptability. It's unprecedented. Agreed, said another. We'll design more tests, push the limits, see what these humans are truly capable of. They watched Jerry laugh with his stunned classmates, marveling at the potential walking among them. The human experiment was just beginning. Jerry's data pad chimed, displaying a message from Professor Zixnorp. Extra credit opportunity. Meet in Lab 7B at 0200 hours. Rubbing his eyes, Jerry checked the time. 00145. He yawned, pulled on his uniform, and shuffled through the quiet dormitory halls. The lab door hissed open. Jerry stepped inside, blinking against the harsh light. His eyes widened as he took in the scene before him. A dozen alien figures loomed, each more imposing than the last. Chitinous exoskeletons, tentacled appendages, and bioluminescent ridges adorned their forms. At the center stood a towering avian creature with razor-sharp talons and piercing eyes. Welcome, Jerry of Earth, the avian intoned. I am Commander Kreax of the Galactic Defense Force. Jerry's mouth went dry. I... I think there's been a mistake. I'm here for tutoring? Kreax's beak clicked. No mistake. Your recent physical feats have drawn our attention. We require further data on human capabilities. Data? Jerry backed away. Look, I should go. Massive guards blocked the exit. Kreax's eyes narrowed. Your cooperation is not optional, human. Submit or face dissection. Jerry's heart raced. He glanced around, seeing no escape. Shoulders slumping, he nodded. Days blurred together in a haze of pain. Jerry gasped as another bone snapped, the sickening crack echoing through the lab. Alien devices whirred, measuring his vital signs. Fascinating, a tentacled scientist muttered. The osteoblasts are already reforming. Jerry bit back a scream as the bone knit itself back together. He lost count of how many times they'd broken and healed his body. In the cafeteria, Xanth's antennae twitched with worry. Jerry, you look terrible. What's going on? Jerry forced a smile. Just studying hard. Don't worry about it. He couldn't risk telling the truth. These fragile alien students would be crushed if the military retaliated. Finally, after what felt like weeks, Kreax delivered his verdict. The human's resilience is remarkable. However, their defiant nature makes them unsuitable as controllable assets. We must neutralize the threat. Jerry's blood ran cold as they strapped him to a cold metal table. The sedatives dulled his senses, but couldn't quiet the panic rising in his chest. A scalpel glinted in the harsh light. Jerry struggled weakly against his restraints. Suddenly an anguished cry split the air. Stop! Xanth burst through the door, followed by a handful of Jerry's classmates. The Trill's eyes were wide with horror. I saw it all. Telepathically. You can't do this. In the ensuing chaos, Jerry felt the sedatives wearing off. Adrenaline surged through his system. With a primal roar, he snapped the restraints and lunged for the nearest weapon. A surgical blade. What happened next was a blur of violence. Jerry's muscles moved on autopilot, fueled by desperation and rage. 
Alien blood splattered the sterile walls as he fought his way through the lab. When it was over, Jerry stood panting amidst the carnage. His clothes were in tatters, his body covered in cuts and bruises. He turned to see Xanth and the others staring at him in shock and revulsion. We, we need to go, Xanth whispered. Now. They fled through empty corridors, eventually reaching a small ship docked in a hidden hangar. As they lifted off, Jerry slumped against the wall, utterly spent. In the days that followed, holed up in a decrepit safe house on some backwater moon, Jerry made a vow. He would never again speak of Earth or reveal the true extent of human capabilities. The cost was too high. As his wounds slowly healed, Jerry stared out at the alien landscape. He now understood the fear in the eyes of his classmates. Humans were more dangerous than even he had realized, and the galaxy wasn't ready for that truth. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.